trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thine own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge God and he will direct thy path welcome to testimonies with Akeem Smith the show that brings transformation miraculous and inspiring stories across Jamaica uh, today with me I have uh, Carlton Francis who hails from the parish of Clarendon he has stories that he would like to share with the world and to you know confirm or to let you all know that god is still able sir francis yes sir <laughs> what are you doing i am good always good I, I am happy to hear that let me first say um thank you so much for you know taking the time out to be on this platform it really means a lot to us but i want to get right into it i thank want you for having me as well. <laughs> you're welcome man so i want you to tell us you know how was it like growing up in clarendon in terms of your your high school your primary school days high school days um you know did you have had any challenges going to high school going to primary school because i believe persons would, would want to know that okay first of all i'm from tollgate um a community to be exact duke street yes and there's a village that i love so much is mm. like i'm stuck right mm. there regardless of what happened over the years yes yes so growing up in my local district it was just like about 17 to 18 families mm. in one house no oh families oh, oh, in families. the district oh okay it was so um there was it wasn't populated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so growing up i am um, to find friends it take a while right yeah but by then we start to roam the community, the district. Mm -hmm. It's like we own the district. Yes. And those days, um, which I still believe in, although I think it hardly exists, that it takes the village to grow a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, start off at, I went to two basic schools, mm -hmm. St. Diego Basic, um, Thompson Basic. Mm. and then Tollgate College, which we call Big School. Big School. <laughs> yeah. So the first day at school, I got a, a, there was a challenge. The very first day at Big School. Mm. And it is in one of my book, Not Guilty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the first day, I was accused wrongfully. Oh, wow. So I was sitting in row number three. Yes. And a girl in row number two. That time, children crying the first day. Mm -hmm. So because it's like that was the first day back to school. Well, I don't, that, wouldn't say back to. Or school. you wouldn't say that, okay? First day at school because it's not every one at the time usually go to basic school. They go oh, okay. straight to big school as we oh, call it. So children crying, right. especially the girls. So her brother was in a class higher, which is grade two, and. He ran over to say, what's wrong? And she used her big finger and said, no. He said, who lick you? Mm -hmm. And she just... Point. And the boy just beat me up. Mighty God. Okay, so, <laughs> so but I ended up taking revenge back on him about <laughs> two years after. Yes. Right. So, growing up though in the community, Orange Field, Cane Field, Mango, Cashew, we were surrounded by that, mm. so we never hungry. Not at all. Yeah, we never hungry. And as I mentioned, school, before leaving Tollgate, all age, I went into a lot of skirmishes, mm. which is hiding from school. <laughs> so so w w when you say hiding from school, was it a case you, you were following bad company? Because, but you know, our, e e even in my high school days, our primary school days i used to follow bad company bad company i now. don't i wouldn't say that mm -hmm. i believe i was the bad company oh so you made those decisions yes, on your I own i was the leader of the art farm school crew. <laughs> so i was the you know most parents that i said yeah follow bad company no sometimes your child is the bad one yes that's right right so it was so bad that they nicknamed me margon margon buccaneer Bocani. Buccaneer. Buccaneer. Like Henry Morgan. Mm, yes, yes. Right. So then the last time I had from school is when I get into trouble. But before that, though, I did kind of. My life changed where I got baptized. Mm. 
I was 13 when I got baptized, 13, 14. And then I joined the Boys Brigade, which was a Christian, um, it was like the scout. Right. So after the Boys Brigade um, crumbled, and then backslide, it's let me go back to my bad ways. So when I got into trouble at school, that is the time when I decided this is the last time. The last time. Yeah, because I was promised to go to family mm. and everybody said, Carlton, you are bright. Why are you giving problems? I don't know. I don't know. Say no. Once somebody, yeah. once your parents, your parents mentioned No, it's not, your, it's not my parents. My parents didn't know that I was that bad. Oh, oh, no. but 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 overall, once once I hear somebody mention to you that hey, family school is like gonna allow you to be a bit fearful because you know you will be put away in the family school, don't it? Yes, because family um, when I hear that name, it means unchangeable. Yes, it's unchangeable. Like they can't change you, so that's where they're going to mm. send you. So I decide now that I'm going to settle down, take right. up my because in my class it was a very bright class mm -hmm. right children to come in the top 10 you have to work hard so the uh -huh. first time i came in the top 10 i wasn't sure if i did it for myself yes or it's because i love my teacher mm -hmm. so i know the potential was there it was there <laughs> right but when i decided no didn't take common entrance so by then now i want to do the um they usually call it the over nine the grade nine achievement mm -hmm. So back in the days, grade nine achievement is straight via technical. Mm. There was no other school. But back in the days, there were four high school in Jamaica. Mm. Four high school in Jamaica overall? Sorry, in Clarendon. Oh, in Clarendon, okay. So the elite was Clarendon College and Glenmere. Mm. So we had via technical. Right. Don't have first form or second form. Mm -hmm. And then you have Frank Field Technical, which now become Edwin Allen. Yes, right. Those were the four. Mm. So I was in lessons class when, and I feel like sure passed my exam. Mm -hmm. So the principal, Saros, everybody call, everybody fear. fear. <laughs> and what I did, I remember one evening under the almond tree, doing lessons and he was teaching us to pronounce the word encyclopedia ah. mm -hmm. and everybody was saying en sly sly <laughs> instead of ensi yes i was the only one saying it correctly mm -hmm. so he called me in front of the class to demonstrate it mm. but out of fear yes i wasn't sure if i was the one saying it wrong the only one mm -hmm. and everybody saying it Mm -hmm. So when I went up there, I say what other children are saying. They're saying, wow. And one box down. From who? The, what, the, the principal. The principal? Yeah, straight up grown and <laughs> Right. When I went home, maybe a couple of days after my father told me that he couldn't afford lessons fees, so I have to come out of lessons class. Mm -hmm. So my chance to vote it. Mm. So I ended up going to Denby. That's Denby High School? It wasn't high school, it was Denby Secondary. Oh, secondary. So, I spent one year, then I ran away from home, mm. which is another thing which is in my book called mm. um, abuse. Mm. Because of abuse at home, I ran away. Right, right. And I went back to early school, and that is the time when I passed my exam to go to um past the garden agriculture school it's now become it is no case case okay right mm -hmm. then find myself in problem again <laughs> so problem after problem <laughs> right 113 students start that school they open in 1980 just yes. like garvey Masio. and when i went to start that school they transfer the college student, Twickenham Park was College of Agriculture. Mm, yes. They transferred them over there and children demonstrate and we were all expelled. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to Barnett Commercial College, a private high school in Port Antonio. Mm -hmm. And then the principal for Pasta Garden 
Teachers College. Promise me that if I pass all five subjects, not the mm -hmm. yet, it was testing, I was testing myself with the JSE. Okay. Jamaica School Certificate. Yes, yes. And if I pass all five, she will accept me into college. Mm -hmm. So because I was so versatile with history, I love it. I'm like I'm hooked on history. <laughs> I put it aside, do the other four subjects, civics, um, mathematics, English language, and geo. And I failed history. Mm. That Fail. was I lost my chance. Wow. At the same time, I was on the list to go to Garvey mm -hmm. because I didn't have to pass the exam to go to Garvey. Okay. It's just open. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't want to come back home. Mm -hmm. But if I knew that Garvey was a boarding school, then I would have accepted would have returned. it. So I just losing all the chances. My God. So when I come back to Clarendon, then I went to VA Extension. That's where I did six. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's my schooling, except I did a course after. Um, I did communication, mm -hmm. legal issue one and two, okay. and um, management skill. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I mean, it's, it's so impressive, you know, all, yeah. all, you know, everything that you've been through, you know, missing so many opportunities, it, opportunities but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Right. Um, I literally forgot to mention that Mr. Francis, he's an author and he, you, I believe you have how, how many books? Two released? books. Two books released. And he has um, two of them here on set. He has the Not Guilty by Carlton Francis and the Bloody Will. And so he's going to go actually, you know, to tell us about the Bloody Will, the, the, the Bloody Will, um, what this book is all about. I mean, not, the, the not, not guilty. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the not guilty book. So I want you to go into it. Um, tell us more about the bloody um, the not guilty so that persons who want to buy it can order it and stuff like that. So tell us about the bloody um, the not guilty book. Okay. The not guilty is a situation that happened um, 36 years ago. Mm. Yeah. So it was April 7th. Yes. 1988. So I came home that night at about 11.30 and I took a shower outside with the hose, mm -hmm. the garden hose, mm -hmm. outside that night and then I went inside. So while I was there at about 1.15 in the morning that night, I heard a knocking on my window. Mm -hmm. So the window was a louver blade. Right, yes. So the second knocking Carlton, a Macaulay. Mm. So Carly was one of my brother. Yes. So I opened the window and when I look I realize he seemed very scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seemed frightened and I said, What? So he was telling me about what happened the day my father and my neighbor had a quarrel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what my brother did during the night when the man, his name is Jakes, yes. still alive. Mm -hmm. he, Jakes left, came back home that night, and he waited until Jakes was in his house, thought Jakes was asleep, and he went to burn down Jakes' house. Wow. Okay, so he was there telling me, and I was there listening to him, the story, and shortly after, I saw when Jake's drove out. Mm -hmm. So apparently to go and report it to the police. Right. So Jake's, so that time, but when Jake's realized what happened that night, Carly, my brother, he didn't run for Jake's sign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he didn't run to his house, he ran to my house. Right. I'm not sure if he ran to disguise himself to my house. Mm -hmm. Or just panic. Just to confirm, so at that time you, you were still in Jamaica, you're overseas? No, 1980, I was 23 years old. Oh, I was about 23. I was living in Duke Street, Okay, Gate. okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, when he explained what happened, I was there listening and all in my mind, I hope he don't get into trouble. Yes. I didn't really think in that things going to be twist. Mm. I just I wonder what my brother don't get in trouble. Yes. And then with a little uh, what should I say? I didn't believe Jake's deserve mm -hmm. 
to lose his house. Yes, yes. All right, so Jake's throw out and hold the fire. He left to report it. And Carly went down and burned it down. Went back and finished burning it down. <laughs> wow. So just to confirm, so Carly is who? Your brother? Yes. He's your what, eldest brother? Yes, elder brother. One of my elder brothers. Oh, uh, wow. So he went back and burned down the house. Right. Well, proceed. All right. So I went to bed the night and in the morning, scared to even look down at my neighbor's property mm -hmm. to see if the house is there. I know it yes. is not there, but I just don't want to look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went out to Tollgate, St. Jago Road and pick up a lady, Miss Diley, a returning resident, one of my friends. And while on my way to Mapin, both of us, I was pulled over at the four pass precinct. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I was driving a Volvo mm -hmm. and everybody knew that car because there was not much car around that yes, time, yes. much less a Volvo. Mm -hmm. So even the police. So I was identified by the car I was driving. Mm. Apparently, Jakes didn't went there to tell a lion. Mm. It just misidentity. Oh, because you look just like you. No. Because he ran straight to my house. Mm. He didn't run to his house. To his house. Okay, I see. All right, so immediately as the police pulled me over, he said, I'm going to repeat, quote him. One look me looking at your face, me say 15 years of GP. Mm -mm, just like that. Yeah. Wow. And he said, take off your lace, take out your lace on you. I was immediately charged for arson and attempted murder. Mm -mm. Okay. I never tell the police, the judge, nor anyone at the time that I knew about it. Mm -hmm. Knew about who did it. Who did it, right. Okay, today there are many, many people, hundreds of people over the years ask me why I didn't speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I wasn't found guilty, people right. wouldn't be asking me that question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I would be free and that question would not ask. Yes. But there are three real reasons why I didn't mention. One, I love my brother. Mm -hmm. Two, if I speak what happened that time, I would become the crown evidence, the crown witness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And me speaking against my brother, 10 years old. Mm. Yeah. So while I was charged, I decided that I'm still not going to give up my brother. Mm. You know, I, it's, it's, it's so, it's so, um, not, I, don't, I don't want to use the word strange, but my question to you would do you think your brother would do the same thing for you in terms of you know not do you know no 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 what no. okay that thought would never come across my mind because i have to understand when you love your family right right i just positive you see you cannot okay. see you cannot see the wolf mm -hmm. behind, behind the, sheep. the sheep yeah no you can't okay. so that wouldn't come across my mind right okay so I went through that ordeal with um then to finance the the um the attorney. I went through a challenge, but at the end and I owe so many people gratitude. Mm -hmm. I mean my whole community. Yes. Work house full every day. Mm -mm. And I remember just a few people left back in the community, elders who if you go to them now, they could just tell you the story. If I can call their name, like Miss Lucille, elderly, mm -hmm. still yes, there, yes. Miss Dai, mm -hmm. and most of them who passed away. Yes. And but, so it was still on there, but every time they see me, like they would call Tan. Yes, yes. Right. So I was so loved because I've never rode to an elderly. <laughs> I've never rode growing up to an elderly. So I was like a community boy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are loved by everybody. Yes. But behind it, though, I was a rude boy. <laughs> but, but I never rude. I never. They don't see me yes, yes, yes. involved with a lot of fights at school and mm. so on. But anyway, so back to that. I am um, kind of struggled to find the seven thousand five hundred dollars at the time for the attorney, which was a lot. Yeah, but it was a lot of money, you know. And I know, and, 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 and like seven thousand is like nothing. Right. But then it's a lot of money. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. there was a gentleman living in the community 
um, Mr. Law. Mm -hmm. I remember all the attorneys, $900 left to pay him. And he keep putting off the case so he get his money. And I was walking to Tollgate one day and I saw Mr. Law and he stopped and said, I um, want my son out mm -hmm. the court going. So when I explained, he said, meet me at my house. Wow. And I turned back and I went there and he gave me an envelope. Mm. So when I said thanks and left and out of his sight, I opened it, $900. Nine, look at that. And I went, I didn't get to pay him back before he mm. passed away. And I went pay. Anyway, to cut it short, so my, my trial date was set for the 12th of September, 1988. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And about five days after, Detective Garrick, which was an arresting officer, mm. came to my house to say the case put off. Yes. Because there was a pending hurricane who turned out to be the terrible hurricane Gilbert. Gilbert, ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. So my trial was in, end up being the 7th of November mm -hmm. that year. And I remember going to court. Not even the lawyer didn't believe me mm -hmm. that I was not guilty. Wow. He didn't believe me. And when he was preparing the case, there were two or three elements in it that I said, I don't agree. At that age, inexperience, I didn't have any choice than to work with him because I would have to get another lawyer, but I start to see prison mm, right. just by talking to the attorney. Right. Because he told me that I must not swear. Don't give a sworn statement. Yes. And I said, why? Because I believe that somewhere. I didn't understand at the time. Right. So I explained that they weren't able to cross question. Mm. And I said, so why I wouldn't accept that? Why would I accept that? And he said, if you can't convince me, say you are not guilty, or you're going to convince the judge. Mm, right, exactly. So right away now, I start to I feel this gut, I've been this gut feeling that it now go down well. Mm. The, then he told me that I must tell the court that Jake's and I had a quarrel the day. That's why when Jake's house burned down, mm -hmm. Jake's believe is me. Oh, yes. All right. I didn't like that either. Yes, yes. Because Jake's and I didn't have any mm -hmm. quarrel. All right, so we go to court and the give my Jake's went up give his statement and he was so precise mm. except wrong identity mm -mm. Uh, when it's my time everything that you, you know the phrase the term in Jamaica cut more kill cut. yes 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 everything I said back for mm. when the judge summing up the case to pre presented to the um Jurors, yes, he said, taking consideration, Mr. Francis did not swear. Mm -hmm. So it's telling the right, judge. right, yes, right. And the part about having a quarrel when the jury came back and said guilty, the judge told me to stand up. Mm -hmm. And he checked my antecedent and he said, I can see you're a fairly educated man, mm. but you're a wicked man on top of you. Mighty God. <laughs> yeah. He berated me in a way that, as if there was not a thread of guiltlessness. And when he finished with me, he said, three years hard labor. Wow. And I stand there looking at him and the judge, the lawyer asks him, for leniency and he said no mr francis don't even have any um whatever the use we're not showing sure um that you are sorry sorry right right or what remorse mm -hmm. yeah remorse. he said he's not showing sure no form of remorse but it's just me because <laughs> i'm not crying don't mean um furthermore i grew up with a very low self-esteem oh so to give the eye contact yes I couldn't do that, especially adult. Even though mm -hmm. we have a problem with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. All right, so right there now, we're table going to start to turn. Where people now start to every step I made, I'm getting help. 
Mm, yes. So I went to jail, Maypen jail. It was a Friday, I think. Yeah. And the Wednesday, they're going to take me to DP, St. Catherine District Prison. Okay. So when I went there in the jail, I saw a gentleman there and he started to ask, I'm Ron Dissel. Mm -hmm. But tell him, tell everybody, so don't touch this man. Just like that. <laughs> then a visitor came to him. It was an attorney. And when he finished speaking with the attorney, he told the attorney to sort me out. Mm -hmm. And the attorney applied for my appeal, appeal for me free of cost. Wow. I don't know if it was politically motivated for that guy was a political activist. Yes, yes. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they took me to Spanish Town District Prison um, about four or five days after. And when I went there, um, most of the detail, I described the prison in detail in the book. Mm, yes, yes. But to cut it short, the next day I got a call. An orderly came to call me. An orderly is a trustee. Yes, yes, trustee. He's a prisoner, but it's a trustee. Mm -hmm. And said they want me at the general office. So when I went there, I saw, I met with Mr. Page, Corporal Page. And he asked me if I know him, and I said no. Mm -hmm. Mr. Page is from Togate, <laughs> a joining community. Yes, maybe but you I didn't know. know him. Right. But I know his car, for his window never wind down. Yes, yes. Apparently, he know my story. Mm -hmm. And he said he want to help me, but he can't unless I drop my appeal. Oh. Right. Which he kind of some now. Mm -hmm. I don't want any conviction. Yes. Furthermore, I was misled by the attorney already. So when he explained to me, he said, you're here on cowboy lunchtime. <laughs> cool. Being short yes. sentence. Okay. So he said three years is not 36 months for me it's going to be 24 months mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if i appeal the appeal take longer than 24 months all right and when that appeal going on and my 24 months up they're not going to let me out mm. because my case still pending it's still yes he said if i drop my appeal he would turn me into an orderly mean that i won't live with the prisoners right right yeah, that's the population there is a section with 16 apartments for orderlies yes, support yes. clean place nice well it can be nice place <laughs> it is good but it is still behind the wall right and me just say yes 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 <laughs> and before the weekend mm -hmm. he took me to my new place and i become the orderly for the general office it's mm. like the top number one orderly in the entire prison wow so my responsibility was to, I became the mailman. Mm -hmm. So the mailman now, now over time, I know the whole prison population. If I say Tom, I can't tell you where to go and find him because. Yes. So I become popular in the prison system where even more than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I became the chef for the, became the, the mailman and the chef for the general office mm. so i never ate prison food yes right so over time now my arm um, explaining this is really explaining the goodness what people are always doing for me mm. um a water and i have to call his name mr greaves he mm. was so good to me wow. he was one of the general office clerk so yes. i work in the superintendent office mm -hmm. and he adopted temporarily adopted he and his wife and of my my daughter until i'm out right, right i'm just telling everybody yes, yes. my two visits per week become unlimited wow it's like everything up in around me and i know that that is real that is real indeed he is right so Everybody start to the, to the post office in Tollgate. Mm. When you go there, they ask to the sign a petition mm -hmm. to get me free. Right. And they follow up with the parole office. The parole office, after 18 months, they will consider. 
Yes, yes. But the parole office was so much under pr pressure. Mm. In 14 months, they called me and released me. Really? 14 months? 14 months. Wow. <laughs> so you were supposed to spend what? 36, 36. 24, 18, 14 months. Mighty. Look at God. 10 months I supposed to report at Garden Street, Maypen, mm. at the parole office for 10 consecutive months after Camp Breach. Mm, my God. And after four months, I went there, they waived it. Mm, look at that. Right. People tell me they never see it before. They never yes. see a parole happen so fast. They never see parole board waive the, the visits. That's a miracle. Right. <laughs> but then my problem didn't stop there. Uh -huh. So in my book, where is it unbelievable? Yes. Are things that people are going to say, no, Carlton must be lying. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of some things that was following me until I said, man, I need a room in the sky to rent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Encounters with the law. With the law, yeah. While on parole, it means that you have to walk a straight line. Yes. And the first encounter, I was in Kingston at my uncle's house in Greenwich Farm, and I borrowed his bicycle to go downtown to buy something. Mm -hmm. So on Marcus Garvey Drive approaching Industrial Terrace, there was a spot check, police right. spot check. Mm -hmm. and they stopped me, questioned me, um, and then say go. Mm. I was about to ride off one of the police, said, hold on. Mm -hmm. Stop being coming. So, what I have on a bicycle seat? Mm -hmm. My uncle had about half a pound of ganja. Mighty God of Daniel. Straight back up prison. <laughs> you know. And wow. luckily, mm -hmm. it was a crooked cop. Yes. He took the weed for himself and said, Go on, go on. Mighty God. Wow. All right. Let me give you only one more of the many encounters. Yes. One more. About three months, two months, while I was on parole trying to walk a straight line, I went to visit my cousin in Vineyard Town, yes. in Franklin Town, Toggy. You know Toggy, maybe? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe, yes. So, I went there about 6, 6.30, and about 9 o'clock I was about to leave. And I'm saying, I see too late now, wait till the morning. And in the morning, about 5.30, we are knocking on the window, mm -hmm. on the door. Police, open up. Mm -hmm. Target opened the door and realized about one dozen police out there. Mm -hmm. And them just pushing me on barge. Yes. As them see me, one of them says, see boy. Yeah. See boy. Yeah. And, and they took, see you them at all. Yeah. They took me to Central. Interrogation, interrogation to find out. But all they were on, what is my alias name mm, yes. and i said i only carry two alias name in my life morgan and dr francis dr francis and inspector come back and them said then i'll let me out until somebody can identify me mm. they're still wondering what is it what is the matter yes so my aunt came after bring me birth certificate come by that time about 1 30. Mm -hmm. let me out and when I police I talk with you and I say, any side me sleep on the night must sleep up on me. <laughs> they were waiting to kill me. Wow. What really happened the night, the evening I went by my cousin and go over there. Somebody saw me and took me for the wrong person. Oh. After Sandokan and Natimagan, the upcoming gunman did call, mm -hmm. Phantom Killer. Mm -hmm. From Dunkirk, a joining community. Yes, yes. Somebody thought it was phantom killer and go and report it, call and report mm. it. So the police them come for just. Yeah. Take care. Right. Take care out. Mm -hmm. Later when I saw a phantom killer photograph, no resemblance of me. And that time I realized the police didn't know who they were looking for. Yes. So those with this book, I don't want to say much more about it until they purchase it. <laughs> and, but the testimony part, though, is that the goodness and is like I owe so many people mm -hmm, gratitude. Mm -hmm. I owe my community gratitude. Or they rally around me back in the days. It was they make me famous for bad reasons. Right. There, there, there's there's one question I want to ask before we go in, into the other book, not um, the, the bloody, bloody will. will. Um, so after I get out of prison. Yeah. Right for the the fact that you were misidentified about the burning of the house, mm. did the person know that it wasn't you? Yes, did he, he apologized out? to my brother, my next brother, Mikey. Mm. He saw him apologize, and I'm not 
I wasn't carrying any grudge for him. Mm -hmm. But I always speak that while I was in prison, I was carrying a grudge right. and revenge for my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the day when they call me and say, you have seven days left in prison mm -hmm. um, for parole. Yes. All feelings disappeared wow. because I couldn't come to road to let down so many people, people. Who were depending on me to walk mm. straight. Do you have any regrets? Knowing that everything that you have been through, the um, you know, the many months you have spent in prison yeah. and the misidentity um find when you're least living Kingston and stuff like that. Do you have any regrets um in life with, with in life? No. Mm -hmm. No. No. Um I don't think I understand your question. But regretting by mm -hmm. saying that I should have speak up is another thing <laughs> where if it didn't happen, no one would ask that question. Right, right. But at the same time, based upon what happened, yes, no support from my brother. Looking back, yes, if I could see forward, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would just speak up. Mm. Yeah. Because so so when you say no support from your brother, that means while you were in prison, he he did not come. Never, and, never. no. Um, Even though he know that is not you or him. Yes, but <laughs> are you jolly um go in denial and try to say oh maybe if he maybe think that if him come, we might go bust pan him. That's why now. Oh, All right, but, but yes. that wasn't the reason. Mm -hmm. But then when I look back. He never gave a slice of bread to my children. Wow. And the youngest one was four months old. Mm. Yeah, he wow. never. So that made, and I said it exactly in the book, that made me see that, you know, the, definish, the, mm. the definition of a wicked man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot. And I'm happy that God would have turned the situation around where you did not um, spend your entire life or time in prison. Even though they gave you what three years, you said right? Yeah, because they dropped the attempted murder. Charge. Yes, yes, but you you spent less time, and you were taken from the main prison and put into right. a better section right. where you were assisting in what, cooking every, every, everything. That um, <laughs> um, but I learned to walk a straight line because yes. there are envies both prison and warders. Mm. For warders envy you too, you know, because oh, you are living a better, a life, better life than, than them. them too. Yes. So it, but. I have so many people who guide me correctly, like Officer Morgan, yes, uh, yes. Mr. Richards, Mr. Greaves. To their date, I am friends with them still. Mm. I mean, everything, I believe that everything happens for a reason. And the Bible so must give God thanks, you know. And so, despite of the fact that you've gone through that, um, I mean, you would have learned lesson from yeah. the situation. So I wanted to share with my audience, what lessons have you learned? from the whole matter okay what i learned from the whole thing um which i have it in the book as well yes. is that god was my main antidote ah. and he always placed someone in my vessel i run in the ticket huh i run in the ticket <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah so in my vessel and sometimes i usually question it mm -hmm. and for example um, the, uh, the gentleman, Mr. Greaves, who was one of the clerk, the correctional officer, and the, he was doing so many good things for me mm. until I usually question his motives. Mm. I usually say, why this man so good to me? Yes, yes. But then I realized how God put him there. Yes. He was uh, just a good Samaritan. He was a gentleman adjacent. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And what I learned from it is that I realized that people motivated by it. I remember a lady in my community cursing his brother because his, her brother, her brother was down, got through to me, and he, I remember the lady said, look what Carlton got through and mm. still work. Like she had tell him, say, do like Carlton. Yes, yes. But everybody who read, not guilty. Mm -hmm. Most people told me that, I want to write my book. <laughs> yeah, people have them story. Yes. And so that's my main thing with it. I mean, I'm I'm very I'm very happy yeah. that you have gone through what you have, you know, gone through and know you're living your best life now. But another question before we go into the, the, the brother wheel. Um how did the the whole matter affect your family? Did it affect your your your, your family in a in a bad way? That, um know, 
if you're talking about my immediate family, yes, it would yes. be my baby mother yes, and my yeah, children man, yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, badly too. At the time, we were living at my father's house. Mm -hmm. And my father believed that my baby mother gave bad. He was ignorant of the fact of why I was sentenced. Oh, right. Because Jake said he saw me in my brief. Mm -hmm. My brother was wearing it. Yes, yes. Wow. So when my baby mother came in to give, she wasn't in the corner, she couldn't in there. Right. And they asked her what I slept in that night. She mm -hmm. said my brief, which was the ah, truth. Ah, yes. So it just ran off. Mm -hmm. I'm a baby mother, I give bad statement. If but, 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 but maybe, maybe I, th I think it was a case where she didn't know that what was happening. No, I'm glad that she did that. Mm. Because... I told them I slept in my brief as well as oh, most young men would. Right. Yes. So if she come in, they more realize that some lie telling. Yes. Um, yes. She wouldn't come in and tell a lie. She just has speak the truth. Yes. Yes. Because at the time, my brother, me, Lana, mm -hmm. my baby mother, mm -hmm. and God. Yes. Everybody else around us believe I'm not guilty. Mm. But these four know I am not guilty. I'm not guilty. Right. Right. So it ended up where she had to leave the house. She mm -hmm. couldn't stay there. And as I said, even one of my daughter, one of my daughters, somebody temporarily adopted her until mm -hmm. split up. Next daughter ended up in Manchester. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. And then I spent 59 weeks. Mm -hmm. And my baby mother, um, visited me 57 times mm -hmm. two times she didn't visit me two weeks yes one week there was a prison riot you no know, visiting was Should accepted in, right and one she just couldn't afford it mm -hmm. so to look at the back of the book inside i dedicate the book to her ah yeah. that's in, that's that's indeed a blessing right and I, I must i must say that i am i am touched by the story and you know and i'm also motivated because you know not guilty but god would have allowed the situation to be good yeah. you know people think that you would have maybe spend the entire time in prison or even more but god would have allowed person who see purpose on your life yeah. to come and assist you in the situation so guys if you want to get a copy of the not guilty book um tell us where, where they can get okay it, it would be um both of them will be on Amazon in two weeks' time. And oh. today's date is? Today's is 7th of September, of September. 2024. So right. in two weeks' time, they both will be on Amazon. But in the meantime, you can call 289-696-5228. You will get a discount. Ah, you hear that? <laughs> so anybody who want to buy any one of these books will get a discount all right mm. so tell us about the, the the bloody will because the bloody will seems to be a very very interesting um story because the book also said based on a true story so i want you to tell want to tell you to tell okay. my viewers about the bloody okay will. first of all people who read the not guilty book mm -hmm. always most people would call me and said um 